Yali Madat, everyone. And thank you very much for your invitation to the Aga Khan Health Board to join you at the Circle Club today. Um, it's so nice to see all of you. Please continue to stay at home, observe all of the rules, and let's help each other look after our health and mental well being. I know it's not easy if you're feeling isolated and anxious, but you are not alone. It is okay to not be okay. And we do now have hope on the horizon. In a few minutes, I will be joined by a panel to answer some questions on the COVID-19 vaccine. But to start with, I'm going to remind everyone what Maulana Hazrimam said in his Salgira message of 13th December 2020. And I quote, I wish to reiterate that at all times in your day-to-day -day lives, my Murids should continue to exercise the utmost care and rigor in observing recommended health and safety measures. The reports regarding the development of effective vaccines are encouraging, and I would like my Jamaat to be guided by the advice and directives of their health authorities to benefit from the protection these vaccines will provide. End of quote. Indeed, the vaccine is our ray of hope to get us out of this pandemic and resume at least some of the lifestyle that we were once so used to. Reunited with our families and friends, going back to Jamaat Khanna, eating out, traveling again. The vaccine is critical in protecting you, your family and your communities because it makes it much less likely that the virus will infect you. And if you do become infected, it should only affect you in a mild way. You should not require hospitalization. And so it will drastically reduce mortality. Now the approved vaccines have undergone thorough, scientific and detailed reviews by the public health authorities. It will only be available on the NHS and is free. You will not have to pay for the vaccine. Currently, the program is being rolled out to people in care homes, to frontline healthcare workers, and to those over the age of 80. Within a few weeks, the program will be rolled out to the over 75s, and then to the over 70s and clinically vulnerable individuals. In other words, all of the higher risk groups are being offered the vaccine in the initial stages. You will be invited by the NHS or directly by your healthcare practitioner to attend a vaccination center when it is your turn. The vaccine will be administered in two doses, 12 weeks apart. Very good protection is obtained two weeks after the first dose, and then you must take the second dose to give you long-term protection. So now let's see what the experience has been of two members of our Jamaat who have already taken the vaccine. Please can I ask them to share their experience with us. First, please can I ask Mehrun Baidatu to share your experience with us. Yali Madet. Okay, I, I had my first vaccine on the 21st December. Um, <clears throat> I was a bit nervous because of my current condition, because I'm a heart patient and so and so. But my doctor assured me that everything will be fine. So I went ahead with it. My son-in-law accompanied me. I had my jab, then made me wait for 15 minutes in case if anything turns up. Nothing, I was normal. And then they let me go home. I came home, I changed my clothes. And I was a little bit tired and, you know, so I took a cup of tea and I told my daughter, I'm just going to lie down. And that's it. I just went to sleep through and through the night. I didn't even get up. Usually I get up two to three times at night to go to washroom. But that day I just went to sleep throughout. When I got up in the morning, I couldn't believe that I had slept all night and all evening. Yeah. But I was fine. I had Thank no you. problems. No side effects, nothing. I was just normal. My daughter phoned me. Mom, how are you? How are you feeling? I said, I'm fine. She said, you know what, mom? When I went to get my jab, she's a doctor. 
She said, my arm hurts for two days. I couldn't lift it. You're lucky that nothing happened to you. Mola, Mola was with me. When Thank I went you. to get my jab, I asked Mola, come with me, and he was there. So whoever goes, you just take your Mola with you and nothing will happen. Thank That's you. it. My and, next uh, jab. My next one was supposed to be on the 12th of January, but they canceled it till the further notice. So I'll wait for it. All right, and I'm sure they will send you an invitation so that you have it within the 12 week period. Thank you, Meron Bai, very Thank much. You. Thank you. Um, and our second member to share their experience with us is Gulshan Bai Ladakh. Uh, Gulshan Bai, if you'd kindly take yourself off mute, and Gulshan Bai is going to share her experience in Gujarati. Yali Mothers, Yali Mother Badane, Hussein Chamat Kanani member too. Ane Maro, 14th December, na Maro birthday, Hato, 88th birthday. And it ran the was pochi, money, mara surgery, mati, money, four naivo, ketaro, um, appointment book theoche, um, vaccine master, make it a wow. To a cake at a Javano Child Scott Mass, uh, NHS Center, ma, make it a ketlavage, can address Ipo, money, mokailo, and a cha, four twenty na money Javan water. To Mutia Pochiga, he lives a Christmas arike, and a Bow is Moti line of the line, Mobi, the Articalax to the Bogman Sohata under Gajavano turn. I was under Gay, Nepachimane, Loka Puchu, their birth, birth date, and address, and their name. And a Manasito, a room near the Manemokli di Dene. The Tia, nurse, Doctor Jehata, Loka Mane, injection, my room. Kabare Napati injection like Guche. It was so nice and polite that you find it like anyway. But I am a baby was so the heart dago cacucho caro to money duke at the heart duk toto. Baby was pachi abi matigu. But she be to look appointment money I put to eleventh of January, same time. This is a second one. The eja guy, guy, which you batu and a punch mini pachi money under bolavi between Gishan Ipo Mari at Jamra Hatma to the Daba Hatma Lagai woman. Karayo, Pachi Basu Gariavi, Badu Pati Gapachi. Ane Bijet, you say, Mara Pug Tora Duka Maida. Manelago Mara Pug, heavy page, I came, do catch a money to you, a pug came, do catch at the exercise, Tai Che, walk Maruch Badu. But different kind of pug duktata. Not a pain upon the Kalevaka duke, Eda to a Judichatna pug duktata, a cup of getly hunsene. Mara Yoga met Rakin. My room is under an emission, wick, wicks, and a baby oil lay, and a mix curry, and a bay pug my mecho pera. Massage care room, bay pug no. And a mane pachi, a pachiman de tandy por my mindy. So I was feeling so cold. When it's your case, came tandy por it, tandy to chebara, but a capra sara pera, the tandy came for a bow por my mindy tandy. The manetio was so yet jam. The who got a cat lama. वो अर्धी कलाक पची उठी तो हाजी ठंडी पड़ती थी पाचीस तो ही गए इले कलाक जेटली हुस्सोती होइस ने उठी पची उठी अने मैं कॉफी चाय कॉफी पीती अने बैठी अने मने लागे चे पची थोड़ी आरे मारा पग तो मटी गया जाते उठी जारे पग मटी गया था अने ठंडी भी उठी थे गए थी अने जाक चे मारो पग so I was fine within a day time. That's it. So sugar, everything Shukha. gone through really nicely and smoothly, you know. Excellent, sugar. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, Bai, for sharing with us your experiences. That was very helpful for the both of you, you had your experience. And we will talk a little bit more about side effects during the panel session as well. Now, let me introduce our panel. Um, thank you to all of them for taking time out to be with us today. Dr. Shamez Ladani is a consultant in immunization at Public Health England. 
Dr. Iman Velji is a GP in Southwest London and a member of the Aga Khan Health Board. And Dr. Sherman Lalani is a GP in East London. And what we've done is we've compiled a list of questions that both have come into the health board over the past six weeks and that have been asked by patients of our panel. And if you have any further questions that we don't address, please do put them in the chat box. Tamiza will be monitoring them and we will answer them. And if you would prefer to have an answer to your question in Kachi or Gujarati, please request that in the chat. We do have a multilingual panel. Well, the first question I want to ask uh, is, is to you, Shamez. Um, so what assurance can you give us about the safety and effectiveness of the vaccine? Okay, so um, there has been a lot in the news about uh, the safety of this vaccine. And it is as safe as any other vaccine that has been licensed. The only difference with this vaccine is that uh, the way that they assessed the safety and gave the authorities permissions to vaccinate everybody happened much quicker in what we call a rolling review. So nearly 50,000 people were vaccinated with each vaccine and very detailed information was collected about uh, the side effects such as your arms hurting and so on. And from those 50,000, it was very clear that the risk of any side effects was extremely rare. The reason we have the data so quickly is that the companies making the vaccine took extra effort to collect the data in real time and give them to the authorities. Usually they would make a pack and then send it at the end of the studies. But what they were doing is reporting in real time so that the data could be monitored uh, straight away. What I can also add is that what, when the vaccines were licensed is very different to where we are now. Right now, we have given millions of doses of the vaccines. So we have data for several million doses of the Pfizer vaccines and the other two vaccines are not far behind. And reassuringly, the vaccines still remain safe. Okay, that's good to hear. So you're happy with the safety and efficacy or effectiveness of the vaccines. What about with the new variant of the, vaccine, uh, of the virus? It doesn't change anything. The vaccines are designed to make antibodies that attack a lot of the different parts of the virus uh, protein, not just the variant bit. So at the moment, the antibodies that are made will, will protect against all the viruses that we know of the current uh, strain, irrespective of the variant. We don't have an escape strain. It doesn't mean it won't happen in the future, but everybody believes that's still very unlikely because the vaccine targets the most important part of the virus. And if it changes that part, it makes it very difficult for the virus to survive. So we are very optimistic. Good, good. Thank you, Shamez. Uh, Iman, can the uh, COVID-19 vaccine be given to people with a history of allergy to a medicine, food, or perhaps has been allergic to a vaccine previously? So there are a small amount of allergies which are severe and life-threatening called anaphylaxis. And if you've had anaphylaxis, so this life-threatening allergy to a specific part of a vaccine or an unknown substance, then we recommend that you speak to your GP first. But for all other allergies, the vaccine is safe and can be taken. All right, good, thank you, Iman. Uh, Sherman? What about people who are shielding or those that are extremely clinically vulnerable? Is the vaccine recommended for people with long-term conditions? Yes, so both of the vac all of the vaccines currently available are safe and strongly advised for people who are shielding and those who are vulnerable due to conditions such as chronic heart disease, severe asthma, diabetes, and certain cancers. It's very important for these individuals to have the vaccine when invited because these individuals are at a higher risk of becoming severely unwell or sadly even dying if they were to catch the, the virus. Okay, good, that's very clear, thank you. Um, Shamez, I wanna talk to you about the, this, the 12 week um, ruling that has come in place. So initially the authorities recommended the two doses be taken three weeks apart. The guidance now is that 12 weeks should be spaced between the two doses. So can you explain the reason behind this, please? 
I quote that is a very, very important question, and it's important to understand why we do that. The companies have designed the vaccine to provide maximum protection as quickly as possible, and their, their studies show that they should be given between three weeks and four weeks apart so that you get very high long-term protection. But we're in a pandemic at the moment, and what we want to do is we want to protect as many people as quickly as possible. I think the best analogy, Akbar, is that if you had a vaccine and you had to choose between giving it to your grandfather or your grandmother, would you rather give 95% protection to one of them or would you rather give 90% protection to both of them? What we found at Public Health England very quickly is that within two weeks of giving the first dose of vaccine, you get up to 90% protection with just a single dose. And that's within uh, the period that you would be expected to be protected. So given that it's such a high protection, it's very likely that that protection will continue for many, many weeks before it starts waning. So a decision was made that instead of vaccinating half the population with two doses, we can pop vaccinate the whole population with one dose and still have enough time to go back and give the second dose. So the schedule hasn't changed. It's just the interval that's changed. And within those 12 week periods, we will have vaccinated so many more people and protected them from severe disease. And when they get this second dose at 12 weeks, that will give them long-term protection, which is exactly what we would have planned to do anyways. Okay, excellent. That's very clear. That's very helpful and a good analogy there. Um, so Shamez, to stick with you, why do you think there's been some resistance in taking the vaccine in some sections of communities? It's a very new vaccine. The technology is very new. Uh, the, uh, it needed to go through rigorous testing. And there was concerns that perhaps there were shortcuts being taken. Now, from the inside, I can tell you that that would never happen, uh, especially in a country like the UK, where the government is responsible for the vaccine uh, purchasing and implementation, which is different to other countries where you have to go and buy the vaccine from the healthcare facilities and so on. So over here, the UK would never allow a vaccine to come into a national immunization program until it's done its own safety checks and made sure that this vaccine was going to be suitable to give to a large population. Um, the concerns were that clearly, even in a trial, there were about 50,000 people, and some might say that's not big enough study to do. And in a way that's true, and if it wasn't a pandemic, you'd want to roll out very slowly. But what we've managed to do is we've managed to monitor the safety of the vaccine while the program was being rolled out. So again, when we started the program, we didn't have as much as information as we do now. I think now that we've given it to several million people and we have a very detailed safety profile for them, I think we're very convinced that in the short term, this vaccine is highly effective. And because none of the components of the vaccines actually stay in your body, you do not anticipate any long-term harms coming from the vaccine either. All right. Okay, good. That's clear. Thank you, um, Shamez. Uh, Iman, should the vaccine be taken for people who have previously had the COVID-19 infection? Um, yes. So we recommend that you take the vaccine, even if you've had COVID, because it will give you a longer lasting protection. Um, however, if you've just had the infection, we do recommend waiting four weeks before taking the vaccination. All right. So regardless, you need to take the vaccination. Yes. Um, OK, good. So Sharmin, uh, earlier we heard uh, from Gulshan Bai and Mehrun Bai about the side effects. And uh, uh, I'd like to understand from you, what are the side effects of the vaccine? What can people expect? I understand that some people don't see any side effects and others do. Can you help us here? Yeah. So generally, the vaccines um, are very well tolerated. The most common side effects are some pain in the arm where you've had the injection. You might get a headache or you might feel quite tired. Other side effects include some redness at the site of the injection. You might have a mild fever or feel like chills. You may also get some muscle or joint aches. If any of those things happen, don't worry or feel alarmed. We know people will feel this way as a side effect of the vaccine. If it happens, it usually only lasts for a very short time, maybe a few days. And if you take some paracetamol, it will help. 
Um, my Nanima is 97 years old, very frail, and like many other people, was very nervous about how taking the vaccine and how she might feel afterward. She was very well after, apart from a sore arm that lasted a few days. So that's just another example of how most people experience m- mild side effects only. Okay, so that is to be expected. You have your jab, you have a 15 minute observation time when if anything is uh, needs to be picked up can be picked up there and then you might expect some side effects. So for the vaccines, um, there is a, it depends on which vaccine you have, whether or not you will have that 15 minute observation period. So some of you, um, so if you have one of the vaccines, you will be required to wait. The, another one, so the AstraZeneca, don't, you know, if they tell you you can leave, you can leave. You don't need to wait for that 15 minutes. It's just a difference in the protocol. All right. Okay, good. But the side effects between the two are very similar. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. So let's talk about these two vaccines, Shamez. So we've got two vaccines, well, three vaccines approved, but two vaccines that are currently being administered, the BioNTech uh, Pfizer vaccine and the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. So can you choose which vaccine you get? No, you uh, you cannot choose the vaccine that you get, but actually it doesn't matter. Alfred. They are both very, very good vaccines. Uh, and especially once you have the two doses, it's, it doesn't really matter which one you have. The priority is to get that first dose into as many people as possible. And you hear about effectiveness and so on. Those are just numbers. They're very short term. They don't really mean anything. The way the vaccines work, is that they make your immune system remember the virus. So when it sees the virus, it will get rid of it. And what we do know is both vaccines are very good from protecting against the infection. But we also know that if you do get the infection, these vaccines will stop you getting very sick because it'll just get rid of the virus very, very quickly. And they are both very efficient at it. So the priority is really to get that first dose into as many people as possible so that they are protected from this infection. All right, great. So if you have the first vaccine and it happens to be the Pfizer, then your second dose will also be the Pfizer, right? That is the aim. And there's no reason why that would change. There's a little note right at the bottom saying for exceptional circumstances that might happen. For example, if Pfizer runs out of making vaccines, then there may have to be decisions to be made. But the plan is that you give the same vaccine. But to be honest, Dakwa, from the science of it, they both are trying to do the same thing. They are stimulating the immune system to target the same bit of the virus. And there is a possibility that actually they might even work better if they are separated. It's the, the authorities will sort that bit out, but what the people will get is exactly what will give them the most benefit. And that should be normally the same vaccine. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Iman, if people are housebound, how are they gonna get the vaccine? Um, so for those who are housebound, your GP does have a list and they will be contacting you over the next month. And it's similar to how the flu is given to those who are housebound too. So do wait, you will be contacted. Uh, Just give it about a month. GPs do have this list. Okay, and that's a similar message if you're over 80 and still haven't been called, that you will be contacted. The uh, letters are going out right about now. And if you have any concerns, then you can always call your GP practice in, in a few days time. Now, there's a lot of misinformation circulating about the vaccine. So I just want to have a very quick round of myth busting. Okay, so very quickly, please. Um, for example, the, the vaccine could alter my DNA. Shamed? Uh, That is actually not possible. There's nothing in the vaccine that would do that. The vaccines that we have right now have a little code of the virus. It goes into your body and tells your body to make a little bit of the protein, and then it just gets broken down. Uh, There is nothing in the vaccine that even tinkers anywhere near your DNA, so that should not be possible. All right, but it uses ingredients that are not compatible with my diet, Sherman. And um, so the, in both of the, in all of the vaccines that are currently approved, there are no animal products and specifically no pork products in any of the vaccines. So they're very suitable for people with specific dietary preferences. All right, but I'm better off using homemade remedies, Iman. You can continue your home remedies, but I don't have the scientific evidence that that is going to prevent and protect you from getting COVID like I do with the vaccine, which is why we are recommending the vaccine. Okay, and one more for you, Iman. The vaccine can affect fertility. 
So there is no evidence that the vaccine will affect fertility. And indeed now pregnant women who are at high risk can discuss with their GP about having the vaccine. So we are starting that too as well. Okay, good, thank you. I just wanted to clear up some of those myths. There's a lot of misinformation out there. So where should our sources of information be coming from, Hermes? There's a lot of uh, very safe websites that you can get to. Uh, the NHS UK website is probably one of the safest one. It is very closely monitored. There's a lot of information on the gov.uk website as well, which gives you information about the vaccines. And clearly we have the Aga Khan Health Board where we're very happy to help with any questions that people may have. Oh, great, thank you very much. So um, Tamiza, I don't know if you've got any questions. We're happy to take any additional questions that may be coming through. And as asked if they are immunocompromised, um, what is your opinion? Should they have um, any particular vaccine or it doesn't matter which vaccine that they have? Okay, Iman, do you want to pick that up? So again, as, as we said, you know, these patients are, are at more risk of getting sick should they get COVID. So again, your GP will be in touch with you and will be offering you your vaccine. And yes, they should be vaccinated. There's another question, if I can, about um, the impact of the vaccine on the transmission of COVID and that do vaccinated people still have to adhere to social distancing guidelines? Okay, I, I mean, the answer is yes, but I'm going to ask Shamez to add to that because I can see him waiting to respond. No, it's a very, very good question. And we are all hoping very much that as we expect that it will stop transmission so people are vaccinated should not be able to carry the virus and pass it to the others. But the truth of the matter is that we don't know at the moment, and therefore we're not going to make that recommendation until we have the data. So right now, even if there's a small chance that people might carry the virus, you can imagine going to meet your grandmother, you want to be 100% sure that you're not carrying the virus. And therefore all social distancing measures should continue until we have more evidence. Right. Um, if someone is taking chemotherapy currently, can they take the vaccine? I can try and answer a little bit. So uh, they will call you when it's appropriate. We know that the immunocompromised group is very difficult. We don't know how well the vaccine might work in the immunocompromised, especially when they're having uh, chemotherapy. But the priority here is whatever protection you get from the vaccine is better than not having the vaccine. So if you are called to get your vaccine, even if you're immunocompromised, even if you're having uh, chemotherapy, please have your vaccine because it will protect you better than not having the vaccine. And you really don't want to get this infection if you have underlying medical conditions. Thank you, Shemesh. So then that, that kind of feeds into another question, which someone, a few people have asked actually, is if you've had your first dose and you're waiting for the second dose, can you still get the virus? Okay, Iman, do you want to take that one? Um, yes, unfortunately you can. So that is the reason why, even if you've had the first vaccine, it will reduce your chance of getting COVID, but you need to still take the precautions, wear your mask, social distancing, washing your hands. So yes, please do. Akbar, can I myth bust another one uh, because of this question? Please do. The one of the things that's been the news a lot is people have said, I've had the vaccine and then I got the virus. I think it's very important to emphasize that actually the vaccine takes about two weeks to work. So in those first two weeks after the vaccine is given, you are not protected by the vaccine. So that is the time you can still get the infection. And right now there's a lot of infection around. So you have to be careful when you go for your vaccinations, you have to be extra cautious because there's a lot more people over there. And the first two weeks are no protection, but after two weeks, it does help protect much better. So at least in the initial period, please, you have to all be careful, even if you're vaccinated. In any case, there's no room for complacency until we've got lots and lots of people vaccinated. Is there time for one more? Um, yeah, I've got, I've got a couple more, actually, if that's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, if you're okay with that, then we're fine. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, so we've got a couple of questions that have been asked about how long will the vaccine last for within our bodies? How long is our immunity going to be there for? Does it, will it need to be taken annually, like the flu jab? 
Okay, Shamez, you're probably best placed to respond to help us with that okay. one. Okay, so uh, the vaccines should work very well and they should give a lot of immunity. We know at least from getting the infection, you're protected at least for six months and the protection looks very good. So it does suggest that the virus does give you long-term protection. And so the vaccine should do the same. In terms of whether you need to have it every year, it's very unlikely, but you never say never because this is a new virus. But the virus doesn't seem to be able to change as fast as the flu virus, which is why we have to keep changing the vaccine every year. This virus is uh, the bit that we're interested in. The virus is very constant. And as long as that doesn't change, then one vaccine should be enough. Okay, that's, that's hopeful. Thank you. Um, I've got another question here, which I think there's a lot of people that have asked a very similar question, um, and it's to do with the different types of vaccine. And I think you might have already covered this, but I think um, it keeps being asked. So I just want to, you know, if we can go over this again and really reassure people that is there any difference between any of the vaccines? Or is any one vaccine better than another? Has the research behind each one been done in, in a similar way? It has sufficient research been done for each one? Okay, so Sham, as you answered that question earlier, did you just want to clarify on that point? Yes, so the vaccines work a little differently. They have a different characteristics, but actually they, we have a lot of data about all the vaccines. We know what's in the vaccines. We know how it works. We know the immunity it causes, and we know that it protects against infection. They're all essentially the same. There are logistical differences. Some have to be frozen at minus 80. Some can be given at, room, at, at uh, fridge temperatures. But at the end of the day, when you get called for the vaccine, the important thing is to get that first dose inside you. Once you have that, you'll be protected. And it doesn't matter at all which vaccine you get. The protection is, is still brilliant for all of them. Just take the vaccine. Yes. OK. And um, a, qu a question about um, the side effects. Uh, how long would you say, in your experience, that the tiredness that some people experience, how long does that last? Okay. Um, generally speaking, anywhere between one and three days. Um, and, and as I say, if you are feeling unwell, you can take some paracetamol, which will help. Um, but it's very short lived. Can I also make the point that most people don't get any side effects at all? Okay, some people get some side effects. So don't expect that you're going to be tired or your arm is going to get hurt or you're going to have a fever. The majority of people who have the vaccine have absolutely nothing with them. They can feel a bit of pain where the vaccine is given clearly. But apart from that, it really is unpredictable and uncommon. So when you have your vaccine, expect not to have side effects and then you might have one or two that you just have to live with uh, for a day or two and then they'll disappear. And it might be different for the first dose and the second dose, right? You might not have it for the first and have it for yeah. the second and vice versa. So just be prepared for that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, another question that again is coming up quite a lot is um, if you're on different medication, a variety of medication, um, how do you know whether this vaccine is going to be safe for you to take? Is it going to? Con is there anything that's contraindicated against um, the vaccines? All right. Okay, Iman. So um, the studies have involved a lot of people, and as we've heard, millions have now had the vaccine. Um, and the only um, the only concern I have is those who have had an allergy, a severe allergy, this anaphylaxis to a component of a vaccine or an unknown cause. But otherwise, if you're taking medication, that is fine. We don't, we, we're not assuming that you're going to have any trouble with the vaccine. And indeed, so many people have now had the vaccine and they have been fine too. All right. But well, can I just add to that? The vaccine, the vaccine is an injection that goes into your arm and it, it triggers your immune system. The medicines that you take are generally orally that go into your, your body and your intestines. The systems are completely different. They don't interact with each other and they should, it should not matter at all what medicines you take in terms of what the vaccine does. Good, no concerns there. Great, thank you. Um, a couple of people have asked if they're allergic to penicillin, is it safe for them to take the vaccine? Sharmin, do you have a view? Yeah, if you have a, an allergy to penicillin, 
um, it is still safe for you to have this vaccine. I would still mention it when you go for your vaccine because they'll want to know and ask you questions about the severity of the allergy. But yes, certainly it's still safe. Can I just also add, because I know a lot of um, Jamaati members take medications such as warfarin, which thin the blood, which many of you may be on and be concerned because we often say if you're on warfarin, let, your, let them know about bleeding risks. But even if you are on warfarin or any of the medications similar to that, um, it's still safe to have the vaccine. You might notice after the vaccine, they just hold um, on for a little bit longer to apply some pressure, but it's still very safe. There's no additional bleeding risks. So please feel confident to go in for your vaccine. Good, thank you. And, and with those conditions, you know, when you go to have your jab, they will ask you for your NHS number. So they have access to your records. So they do have access to your medical records. They will ask you some questions and you should also state if you've got any specific concerns at that point as well. Thank you. Um, in terms of the, the, the vaccine itself, Shamir said that it's um, effective on the variant COVID strains. So is it different to how the flu vaccine works? Because each year we have a different flu vaccine. No? Yes, so the flu influenza virus is very different. Uh, you can imagine a car with the engine and it just keeps changing the body every year. So what it can do is swap very, very fast. And so by the time a year passes, you have completely different strains of the influenza virus and the antibodies and your immune system that recognize it from the one vaccine doesn't really work the next year because it's changed so much. With the coronavirus, which causes COVID, it's very different. It doesn't seem to be able to change as quickly. It's not designed to change so fast because it's not supposed to be a human virus. Don't forget that this is a mixture between a human and an animal virus. It was by accident that they can infect humans. So, Yes, they found a way to infect a lot of humans very quickly, but they haven't been designed to keep living in humans and therefore they won't keep changing all the time. We don't know what the future is going to hold, but so far we have no evidence that this is going to change enough that you have to get the vaccine every year. Once you get the vaccine, those antibodies will protect against the COVID virus, even if there are different variants. It's very unlikely that they will change. Uh, but it's something that we do monitor, and clearly, if we do, we have now have the technology to know how to make vaccines very quickly against COVID, so we won't be in this situation ever again. Okay, that's great. Well, the science is changing very fast and keeping up to date. Camisa, is there any more? Um, I've got a couple more, if that's okay, if you've yep. both got the yep. Absolutely. Got four of you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, can you have, uh, thank you, can you have spicy food when you've had the vaccination? Uh, German. Yeah, so there are no precautions that you need to take after having the vaccine. Um, as Shemez already said, and, and I said earlier, there are very few mild side effects and you can just carry on with your day as you normally would, even after you've had the vaccine. You don't need to um, be concerned about that or limit what you're doing. Uh, well, can, I, can I say that you should definitely celebrate when you get the vaccines? Make sure you have something nice for dinner because it's really important. <laughs> And if it's spicy, yeah. <laughs> especially if it's spicy. <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you. Um, Moderna have never produced a vaccine before. Is this a concern? All right, Shamez. So um, the technology that they are using is a very well-known technology. Moderna haven't developed a coronavirus, but they were working on half a dozen other viruses with similar uh, technology to make similar viruses. They just readapted that technology to coronavirus. What you will find is that Moderna will start making, a, they were way ahead of the curve to the others because of the technology they developed. And what you'll find is that this technology is not only used for COVID, but they're going to start making vaccines that much faster than anybody else because of this. So you're going to see very new influenza viruses made by Moderna and other viruses. They're even looking at HIV vaccines. They're looking at other viruses that they can make vaccines for. So this has just given them a platform to demonstrate how much uh, research they had already done by the time COVID came in, which is why they have been so successful. So Moderna actually is ahead of the curve compared to a lot of the other companies. Good, good. And this is the so-called mRNA vaccine yes. technology, right? Yes. 
Um, I've got, again, some people are still asking about mixing the vaccine. So if you have the first dose with, with one um, manufacturer, is it likely that you'll get the second dose with a different one? And um, yeah, so if you wouldn't mind uh, just uh, clarifying that again as well, please. Mm -hmm. Go on, Shamas. I would say no, you should not get another dose. The only reason that might be written in the technical documents is, for example, if Pfizer tomorrow just stops distributing vaccines to the UK, then we would have to use another vaccine instead. But right now, 99.9% .9 of the people will get exactly the same vaccine that they got the first time, they will get it the second time. And the, and the deployment has been designed that way. So you go back to get the same dose that you got the first time around. And, and, and that's recorded, right? It's recorded in your medical records and you get a card when you've taken your first dose that you bring back so they know exactly which uh, vaccine you've received. So you will, you will get the same dose of the, of the same vaccine. And from a, from, a, from a practical point of view, it's very easy because one vaccine has to be kept at minus 80. Where you will be called will be very different because they will know which vaccine is where. So there's no chance of getting a mix up either. Thank you. And um, again, people are still asking about um, the variants. Will, will the COVID vaccine uh, be able to tackle the, the different variants that seem to be popping up around the world? So, so Shamez again had responded to that earlier that they shouldn't, it, they, they should be no impact depending upon which, uh, uh, on the variant. I don't know if you want to add any more to that, Shamez. I can, I, I can try explaining it a little differently. So the COVID virus has got a spike protein, which everybody sees, which is just a little bit of protein on top of the virus. And it's that spike protein that attaches to the body and goes inside the body. Now that spike protein can change a little bit, which may make it attached to the body better or not so better. And that's what a variant is, but it's all related to that spike protein. Now the vaccine makes loads of antibodies against that spike protein. So even if the spike protein changes a little bit or uh, moves around or gets new bits to it or some bits removed, the antibodies at the virus mass will attack the whole of the spike protein. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if the virus changes a little bit, the immune system will recognize that big protein and attack it and kill the virus. Thank you. Um, I think we've gone through all of the questions now, actually, so. All right, okay, good, much. good. Well, I just wanna say thank you to Shamez, Iman and Sharmin. Thank you so much for your time uh, today. Really appreciate it. Uh, so there you have it. I hope our panel has answered some of your questions and more importantly, reassured you so that when it's your turn to take the vaccine, you all look at the positive impact it will have on you and those around you that you love and care for. When as many people as possible have become vaccinated, then the virus will not have the opportunity to spread and cause illness. The vaccine shuts the door to keep the virus out on the other side, and we are all protected. And only then will we be able to go about our daily lives and once again visit with mum or dad or an elderly relative without being fearful. So if you have any further questions, please contact a member of the health board. You can do this through the IIUK directory or by calling the COVID support line or through your Muki Kamriyas or social support volunteer who will either respond or pass your inquiry on to us. And of course, your healthcare professional will be able to answer specific questions related to any long-term health condition. So thank you very much and Yali Madat.